What's up, comic book fans? And welcome to Comics Icons. Now, JJ, what they call me. And today, we got more of the best Spider-Man series being written right now with Jonathan Hickman's Ultimate Spider-Man, issue number two. And y'all, I just have to say, although it's still early and we're only two issues in, this new take on Peter Parker, I find very, very refreshing. And if you haven't jumped on the bandwagon yet, I'm going to leave a card to the first issue right at the top of the screen and leave a link at the end of the video as well. But before I jump into the breakdown for this new issue, I need y'all to follow along with me for a minute. Imagine you've lived a normal everyday life all the way up until age 35. You're married to your childhood crush. You've got two young kids and a super steady job. Nothing flashy, but you're comfortable. And for some of y'all, that may very well be the actual case. But now I want you to add in what it would feel like if you lost your parents back when you were 15 and you had to be raised by your aunt and uncle. And at the age of 35, your aunt is killed by an alleged terrorist attack. Now imagine that the alleged person responsible for that attack that cost you your aunt left you a crazy message from the future telling you that your life is not as it was supposed to be. That back when you were 15, you were supposed to have gotten superpowers and would have become one of the most prominent superheroes of all time. But it was snatched away from you by a time traveler. Now, along with this same message from that same guy that was alleged to have been responsible for your aunt's death, comes with a package equipped with the catalyst that will give you those same powers, as well as the new suit that he made just for you. And then he tells you that he'll visit you in six months with the hope that you would join him in saving the world. How would you react? Would you trust him? And I want your honest opinions in this. Not what you think will happen or what a comic book version of you would do. I want to know what today's version of you would do. If I'm being honest and it were me, I'd probably train my ass off for the next six months with the mindset that this is the dude that just killed my aunt. It might have to go down, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, I'm not saying that's what happens here or even what should happen. I'm just saying that from my perspective, that's how I might respond. And I'm not saying that I'd be a villain either. I'd at least be a hero, but I'd be doubtful of this guy's motives. I probably had a mindset that this guy might be the real villain. Now, I'd likely give him a chance to explain what really happened on that night. But for six months, while waiting on that answer, I think that it's a trick or something. Like, maybe he gave me this because he felt sorry for what he did. Or maybe I think it was a trap and it'd probably kill me and I might not even take it. But I really want to hear how you guys will respond to this. So please chat it up. I'm hoping to hear some really fun responses. Now, with all that being said, I'm not going to do my usual refresher for the previous issue. Because if I'm being honest, I want you all to watch the last video over and over again. <laughs> so if you haven't read the issue or at least seen my video on it. I place a card up top again for the playlist so you can see the moves that were made that led to this new version of Spider-Man getting his powers and all the way up to and including this point in the whole new Ultimate Universe. But if you guys are ready, then without further ado, let's get it. So we pick this issue up with the kids, Richard and May, sitting at the table in the morning. And y'all let me know this too. Is it weird that the son, who's the oldest of the two, is named after Peter's father, but the daughter is named after his aunt? Kind of seems like the daughter should have been named after his mother. I think Mary was her name, but if I'm wrong, I'm sure one of y'all will let me know. But it kind of feels like if both of the parents died together, then both of the kids would have been named after them. But I know it's not a big deal. Plus, us as readers can relate more with the name May because the main universe aunt has been around for an eternity. But in this universe, Aunt May just died, so she was around when little May was born. But maybe Peter just had more of a connection with her than he did his mother. I don't know. But anyway, little May and Richard are discussing this picture on the front page of the Daily Bugle of a new guy swinging around the city in a black suit. And Richard is the super smart guy. So he thinks that this pick is a fake, 
but May believes that it's real. And her and Peter have a pretty funny little back and forth when she asks him what he thinks. When he says to her, I remember when you used to think unicorns are real. And she cuts him off with, unicorns are real. So he's like, right, exactly. So why do you care what he thinks? But it's because to her, he looks scary and she doesn't like it. And it's a pretty cool take because when you think about it, he does kind of look like the black suited Venom symbiote Spider-Man. But then MJ comes out of the bedroom ready to go to work and lets Peter know about the babysitter coming to watch the kids. But she also notices that hubby is getting kind of swole and mama seems to like it <laughs> because she asks him if he's been working out. But then we get to see how he's really been working out, swinging through the city and lifting buses. But we also find out that he eats like 10,000 calories a day now. And he also doesn't need to sleep as much, which, if I'm not mistaken, is another new take on the hero because main universe Peter Parker always seemed extra sleepy the next morning. But one thing that he hasn't gotten used to yet is stopping and he crashes into a water tower, which also subsequently lets him know that he can at least take a beating. But then we move over to J. Jonah Jameson and Uncle Ben, who are chilling at a Turkish bathhouse. Because, you know, these guys both quit their jobs at the Bugle. But they still want to report the news. So right now they're discussing that there was another attempt on Fisk's life last night. And we actually saw the first attempt in the last issue with the new Green Goblin. But what's interesting is that this time the attempt came from inside the building. And because the Maker's Council controls the flow of information so people can only know what they want them to know. The only way Ben comes across this information is because a call mistakenly had went out to the cops and one of the first responders owed Ben a favor. And even though Fisk's security end up keeping the police away from the actual scene, they did get a chance to look at the security footage. And it's that same green armored lunatic flying around blowing stuff up, Ben says. Which we know, that's the Green Goblin. So now the wheels get to turning with these guys. Because they know that the Bugle isn't going to run the story since Fisk owns it. But what the Bugle did run was a picture of a black suit weirdo swinging through the city taken by Peter. Which Jameson notes that it was a hell of a picture by Peter. But why didn't he give it to us? And Ben reminds them that their business isn't open yet and Peter doesn't work for them. But they both realize that they've got something here. Two masked men. One gets buried and one gets the front page. One is the distraction and the other is a story. So they got work to do on both this story and a name for their company. Then we transition over to Peter and we get some sick artwork of him swinging around figuring things out. And he's wondering what he should be doing since his life was stolen from him. He's about 20 years behind learning how to be a superhero. If only there were a sign about what to do next. Hmm. And then he notices a guy on the roof of a bank right across from him as this guy is trying to blast his way in. So he decides to check it out. And although his circumstances have changed, he's still the same old Peter Parker we know and love with his quips. And he scares the crap out of this guy when he sneaks up on him using one. Then the guy asks Peter what he's supposed to be. And funny thing is, just like Ben and Jay Jonah, He's still trying to figure out his name and his mission. So the guy's like, have you ever done this before? And Peter's like, no, not really. Then the guy says to him, well, you're a natural at it. So I guess I'll go home now. Clearly what I had planned was wrong. And I'd like to thank you for stopping me before I did something I regret. I owe you. And now Peter is confused. Like, wait, seriously? And then the guy outstretches his hand for Peter to give it a shake. And Peter's like, well, okay, cool, mister. And then he blasts Peter off the roof and into a trash can, telling him, just call me the shocker. <laughs> so he goes home and climbs in through the window and eats some ice cream. <laughs> this night was a total failure, but not just because of the shocker, but because little May wakes up walks into the living room and freaks. <laughs> <laughs> freaks 
remember, she just said that the black suit guy was scary just this morning. And in her first night sleeping, after telling everybody that he was scary, he's in her living room eating ice cream. <laughs> so now he has to take off his mask so she can see that it's just daddy. He's got to come clean really quick. So he tells her that he's the black suit guy. He got bit by a special spider and it gave me powers. And she's like, you got bit by a magic spider? <laughs> Little maid might just be the MVP so far. But he tells her that she doesn't have to ever be afraid of the costume tell. Then she tells him that he smells bad because, you know, he fell into a dumpster. <laughs> but she also tells him, mom's going to be mad. So now he has to bribe her with some ice cream. So she keeps it a secret just between them for a while. Though she still doesn't like the costume. Now we transition over to Wilson Fisk and Captain Britain is there with him. And Fisk is trying to get Captain Britain to understand the need for running a distraction piece to take away from his being under siege by the Green Goblin. But Captain Britain doesn't want any of it run. And he explains to Fisk that the game being played is to give the people nothing and make them like it. Then he explains to Fisk that he works for Captain Britain and the rest of the council. And they allow him to play king for as long as he can hold on to his kingdom. And this is another interesting new change for the Ultimate Universe. Fisk working for someone else? We all know Fisk. I'm sure he's not going to sit around and accept being under someone else's rule. So I'm sure sometime down the line in this series, Fisk is probably going to make a play for the top spot. But we'll just have to wait and see. So later on, Peter's back out in his black suit and he tells MJ that he's still got some work to do. And he'll be home late. Then he spots the shocker who's at it again, robbing a bank. So Peter is ready for some get back. And this time, when the shocker attacks, Peter's ready for it. And he dodges him. Then he webs up his face. Now Peter's giving him the business this time around. And Shocker even says that he thinks Peter broke his ribs. Because Peter doesn't quite know his own strength right now. So the Shocker doesn't want any more. And he tries explaining to Peter that he's doing all this for his wife. He says that she's dying. And they can't afford to pay for the treatments that she needs. So now Peter's apologetic. And once again, he got got. And Shocker blasts Peter off the roof again and into a dumpster. <laughs> and then he flies off. But this time, in the distance, he's seen by the new Green Goblin. So again, after another failed attempt at being a hero, Peter goes back home and climbs through a window. And as he ponders his failings, he goes back to the fridge for a glass of milk. And I'm wondering if these new powers gives him a dairy craving. Because first it was ice cream. Now it's milk after a fight. But now he doesn't think he can cut it out there after these bad outings. But when he closes the refrigerator door, he sees a picture of a spider that little May drew for him. And he decides that he'll give it another try. And that, my friends, is the end of the issue. So how are you guys feeling about this new Ultimate Universe and Ultimate Spider-Man? I think it's funny that he's got no clue about what he's doing. But I'm loving this overall so far. But after the first issue, I was wondering how long it was going to take for somebody to find out his identity. And it was funny that it ended up being Little May. But you guys let me know what stood out to you about this new take on the web crawler. And do you think that we'll get his along with Jonah and Ben's new names in the next issue? But if you guys enjoyed this video and this channel, and you'd like to support the channel, then you could do so by joining the new Iconic Fan Club channel membership. And I'd like to give a special shout out to the first new Iconic Fan Club member, Samuel Summers. You're certainly most appreciated. But with your Iconic Fan Club membership, you'll gain access to weekly interactive live streams with yours truly in front of the camera, where we could talk about what's been going down in these issues, as well as ones that you'd like for me to go over in the future and other comic news. Plus, you'll get loyalty badges, member shout outs in these videos and more. Or you can donate to the channel with the super thanks. And if you're not able to do that, then you can also still help the channel out tremendously by dropping a like, share and subscribing to Comics Icons for more icons 
in the comic book world. But ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. I'm out. Peace.